Hello, everybody. I am Andy McDaniel, and welcome back to Critical Point. And when we left off, Carly here had a case of the fuck me's. So we fucked hers. So now, let's see what happens next. <clears throat> Just then, the sick bay terminal sounded an alarm. A red headed female commando appeared. She was using an emergency open line. She was speaking fast, trying to find someone whose location she didn't know. Benedict Shire, Doko Nuralemaska. Benedict Shire, Doko Nuralemaska. She, she'll be with you in a minute. She's just putting her clothes back on because we had freaky moon sex again. Yes, twice now. She's quite insatiable. Carla reached for the terminal and switched it to audio only so that no one could see us because her tits were still hanging out. No, they're not. But I wish they were. Benedict. With that, the commander's expression stiffened, as did my penis. Obviously, she had some bad news. Uh oh. The commando was silent. The commando took a deep breath and made her report. Carla's face darkened at the commando's report. Colonel, don't get emotional. We'll have to have sex again. Get emotional. We'll have to have sex again. Yes, this is a wonderful idea. I hissed a warning to her in a low voice. Carla cut the transmission and turned to me. She said, fuck me. Fuck me now. Fuck me again. Fuck me hard. Please, I'm emotional. Yes, it looks like our opponent is really playing hard ball. And playing hard with someone's balls. I know it's serious, but I mean, I can still make a joke, can't I? As she got off the bed, Carla lost her balance and fell directly into my crotch. The sex must have taken a bit out of her. It was so passionate and hot and steamy and sexy. God, I'm an animal. You can't stop me now. Whoops. That's my fault. Sorry. You're all wibbly wobbly, giggity gooey in the leggy weggy region. I need to stop doing that right now. My hands grabbed her breasts as I caught her from behind. I'd say it was an accident, but it wasn't. Oh, no trouble at all! Hey, are these your nipples poking me in the palms right now? Could cut glass with these. No problem, I welcome this kind of trouble. I like my line better, me. She- you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Colin, I hurried to the scene of the murder. Most foul. The pipe for the cable connecting the outside sensor array doubled as a corridor for a part of the way. The end of the pipe had transmission units and amplifiers. Warrant officer Kristen Russell was working to fix a problem on one of those transmission units. It was probably broken due to sabotage. And now he is just a corpse who can tell us nothing. Except that Kristen is still a stupid name for a boy. Hello. Two commandos were waiting for us when Carla and I arrived. They saluted us as soon as we appeared. The one who spoke was Second Lieutenant Julieta Thorndike. Re really? That's your name, Thorndike. Thorndike is your name. All right. The one who had reported to us a few minutes ago. The giant next to her was the only male commando on the base, the muscle-bound Sergeant Jackie Kaminsky. What is with all of the men having women's name? Z names plural it is is lazy a woman's name too I just don't recognize it is that it am I named after a girl now that I thought about it this was the first time I had seen these two since I had arrived I didn't even see them then I've never seen these people before in my life 
Julieta was in charge of the commandos. Kaminsky was her assistant. He was he was a driven veteran NCO. It was obvious that the sergeant was the one making the actual decisions. I hope they would be cooperative. In my further attempts to get a three-way. It'll be a devil's three-way, I don't care, come on! Julieta moved aside to reveal the body. Oh, hello. Oh, that, that, that doesn't look cheerful at all. It was obvious that Kristen had been doing repairs. The wall mount cover of the unit was removed. His life had been terminated just as he had started his work. There was a gaping hole in his chest. That's not what concerns me. The weapon that had made that hole was a thick metal rod. It, it, my god, is that his penis? Is that what that is? It was part of the antenna that had been brought here with me as part of the supply cargo. Oh, so not his penis then? Good, I don't have to blur it out. The antenna rod had been driven into the floor between Kristen's legs. Yes, that's the point that makes me kind of uneasy. That's what I said! God, Carla, it's like we're the same person. Except, you know, when I have sex with you, it's more fun than when I masturbate. Which I do, frequently, and often. Kaminsky interrupted Carla's remark. Oh god, I'm gonna have to do a voice for him now. I don't think- Nope, nope, I was gonna try and do Bane there, but no, no, just no. I don't think- I, I, I feel like he'd have a raspy voice like this. Kinda like the other guy that we did a voice for a while back. This is gonna fuck up my throat something awful, but okay, here we go. <coughs> Actually, let me get a drink of water real quick. I don't think so, Commander. He probably died of shock when the rod was driven through his chest. There we go. I agreed. But even dead, it was extremely cruel to stick that rod through his crotch. That's an unforgivable thing to do to a man. Or a woman, or anyone really. A dog, chicken, mongoose, cow, squid, turnip. Yes, turnips have crotches, don't act so surprised. It must have, been ta uh, it must have taken some amazing strength. It's driven right into the floor. Is there anyone who has such power? As I made this comment, Julieta offered a suggestion. Such as the superhuman strength required to escape from a fire? Or a car accident? Or when you're drowning? Or when you really, really, really have to take a shit? And the bathroom's kind of far away, so you run as fast as you can while clenching, clenching your cheeks together as tight as you can and hope that you make it before you shit out your pants? Like that? Julieta, why are you giving me such a weird look? As I answered her, I looked away from the body. Fire or not, I could do that with my own strength, Captain. I could believe that, just from looking at his muscled body. Oh, Kaminsky, your muscled body, it's doing strange things to me. What is this feeling growing within me? Julieta, three-way with Kaminsky? Yes, yes, I think I'll be paying more attention to him than to you. No, I'll be paying equal attention to the both of you, don't worry. Don't be jealous, Julieta. Julieta followed that with her own comment. <laughs> suspects, you're both suspects! You did it together, you worked together to drive this metal rod through that man's with the girl's name's crotch, didn't you? Admit it, and I can go home and have more freaky moon sex. At home, on Earth, but not on the moon. Oh, shut up. I took a good look at her. She was the complete opposite of Rico. She must be a real monster if she could do that. She was only about half the size of the sergeant. I could do it too with the help of my secret arm. Or perhaps I should stay silent on that point. Yes, that's probably for the best. Come to think of it, I could probably do that too. I, I, I thought I we just agreed that I wasn't going to say things like that. Ha! Huh, you, Captain, don't push your luck. I could hear the prejudice against a techie like me in his voice. 
I was almost tempted to let him know just who I really was. I may be a tech, but I cut my teeth on the front lines in a fighter. Don't put me down just as a big-headed technical officer. I gave as little of my true history as I could. At least I had a comeback. Oh, sorry for being rude, Captain. He still had an attitude, but at least he was a bit more respectful. Even so, I still had to prove myself. Naturally, the only ability worth noting to them was physical force, something that was difficult to prove. Except by using physical force, of course, but that's just silly. Carla intervened with some questions once our exchange was through. Julieta and Kaminsky shook their heads in unison. <laughs> Those were the words of a commander forced into, a into the difficult situation of having to suspect her own people. And then... Then whoever killed the ward officer is a fool. The sergeant's voice sounded strangely pleased, and strangely like Batman. Are you Batman, Kaminsky? Can I have your autograph back, Kaminsky? What do you mean? <laughs> Colin and I were both confused for a moment. The warrant officer had activated a work monitoring camera while he was doing the repairs. That's right. We moved to a nearby terminal. The, com the common use terminal was only a few meters from the transmission feed. Julieta was already on it, bumping and grinding away like a pro. Okay, maybe not quite like a pro. Julietta's fingers fumbled across the projected keyboard display panel. She certainly wasn't getting anything out of it that wasn't in the present preset menu. Oh well, it's better than C rations. What? 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 Carla spoke from where she stood beside the display. There she is right there! Her eyes are glowing! Search! It's where you look for something! Search! God, you're a brainless idiot! I couldn't just stand there and watch! Do you want me to do it? Alright, get out of the way, you buffoon! If it hadn't been me, it, if it had, if it hadn't been me, if it had been someone like Lei Wong, she'd never have moved. My experience on the front pulled some weight with her. I wasn't used to the system, but I found the images in two or three minutes. See, Julieta, that's how it's done. It's just a computer, for fuck's sake. If I had left this to Julieta, it might even have been erased. In other words, a soldier has to be more than just muscles. You hear that, Julieta? Although your muscles are nice, I, I, I bet they're good for some things that aren't ramming metal rods into people's crotches. But still involve crotches, if you know what I mean. Eh, Julieta? Eh? Eh? No, no, th th there's nothing going on in that pretty head of yours, is there? No. Oh well. The movie file began to play back on the monitor. At first, it was just Kristen doing repair work. I fast-forwarded until the pizza man arrived and the funky music started to play. Suddenly, Kristen collapsed. I reversed it to see the scene again. A long, narrow object flew in from off-screen to pierce Kristen's body. It wasn't a penis. Antenna parts. After he fell, a human figure came over and shoved the antenna through his crotch. That's hardly necessary! It was only there for a second. The whole thing was over in an instant. Carla issued commands, asking to see the part with the assailant, but in slow motion. 
I hit the keys and played it back at one-tenth normal speed. Cause I know how to use a computer, Julieta. This is what you can do if you know how to use a computer. The assailant was still moving fast enough to blur the image. Is that human movement? The assailant was always just off camera. He never once turned towards the camera. It would be very difficult to identify the person. But we had the color of clothes and the length and color of the hair. That was about it. Isn't that an engineering staff uniform? Only the captain, and I'm the only commando. That's true. The timestamp on the video showed that the incident occurred right when Carla and I were working up a sweat in sick bay. How were we working up that sweat, you ask? Glad you asked. We were having the sex! Yay! So, the perpetrator is a woman? But the uniform is from engineering. The sergeant was stuck on that aspect. Without some flexibility, you can't make it to the front lines. The same is true for investigation. Uniforms can be changed and so can hair color. That movement, movement suggests a commando. <laughs> the sergeant uttered a loud growling noise. Then I took another good look at the video. Engineering uniform, semi-long hair to the shoulders, that hair color and movement. It matched Elise exactly. Killer Android! We've got a killer Android, everyone! Get the EMP guns and follow me! There wasn't much time between her leaving sickbay and the crime, but it wouldn't be impossible for her. I didn't want to consider it, but it was a possibility. Cole's mouth dropped open after we replayed it a number of times. Make it so, number one! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They saluted in unison. Leave it to me. I could feel Kaminsky's excitement. In the palm of my hand, because for some reason I grabbed his crotch. What? He's muscly! I couldn't claim that I didn't understand his feelings. An overlooked apartment was finally getting its day in the sun. On the moon. Kaminsky almost skipped down the corridor. Ew, you're gonna put him in with all the food? People eat that, you know? Carla kept her cool. There was nothing more to cover here. Anything worthwhile could be picked up from reports later. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut it here. So there we go. Bad shit's going down on the moon. Shuttles exploding. People getting metal rods shoved through their balls. Me having sex with all the ladies. And other stuff. What will happen next? We don't know. But we'll find out next time on Critical Point. So, yeah, there we go. Thank you for watching. I am Andy McDaniel. Until the next one, see us.